All right, and we are back from that break. I hope you've enjoyed the feature that has been done on eye care. And you take care of your eyes, make sure you go for some checkups here and there. Well, uh, on to the next conversation of the day being entrepreneurship Tuesday we're going to talk about a topic that should interest you um, this is mostly geared towards those that have companies or those that are looking for employment and you know don't really know how this what goes behind in the background HR professionals might be uh, aware of this we're going to talk about management and recruitment specifically casual outsourcing and staff management and um, for this particular topic, we have been joined by an expert. Uh, she goes by the name Nelly Ayako. She is the CEO and founder of Smart Royal Consultants, and she does consultancy among many other things that she's going to tell us about. So, Karibu Sara Nelly. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Glad to have I you with us. It. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, tell us uh, more about you. Um, you are the CEO of a, a Smart Royal Consultant. What else do you do, or what do you do in that company exactly? Um, Smart Work uh, Consultant, HR Consultants. Mm -hmm. um, it's a HR consultant. We uh, deal with recruitment, um, HR consulting aspect, end to end, mm -hmm. as well as uh, staff management, where we also manage casuals and other staff. We also do career mentorship and coaching to young ones, and not only young ones, to every uh, age group. And besides that, we also do training to various companies. We are located at Kileleshwa, uh, Akasuku area. Mm -hmm. That's where our office is. All right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So there's career coaching, there's training, and there's the staff uh, outsourcing, you know, mm -hmm. and recruitment. Sure. So um, mm -hmm. for someone who doesn't know about this or someone who's just hearing about um, this today tell us what is casual outsourcing what is the concept behind it okay um, when you're talking about casual outsourcing you realize some of the company um, they end up um, maybe they have more staff yeah and mm -hmm. uh, they end up outsourcing casual and managing casual and other staff sometimes a bit tedious so we come hand in hand just to come and take uh, control of the staff uh, casual staff, where we manage them, we handle all aspects of HR end to end. Actually, they'll be working in your company. For example, your company is called Y, Company Y. Mm -hmm. They'll be working in your company as mm -hmm. uh, Company Y. But then, they are our staff. So they are st the staff for Smart Royal Career consult Consultants. So we do recruitment, and mm -hmm. we do everything. And in case of anything, they come to us and not you people uh, mm. from your company. All right. So it can be casual, but it can still also be uh, normal other management, uh, the, the, the other staff where we also manage depending mm -hmm. on the company and requirement. All right. Would you say that this is a cost-effective solution for companies? Sure, it is. Because uh, uh, um, you'll find that most of these uh, companies, they have a HR who are supposed to be strategically be looking and managing the company and uh, handling other strategic aspects within the company. Um, managing casuals is not always easy because you have to look for them. And you know, you sometimes you find tasks are not always there for them, yeah? Mm -hmm. Maybe this week there's no task or this month there's no task. Next month they are, we have a lot of work for them. So you have to go look for them where they, wherever they are. You come train. Uh, help them get to the system, manage, work, do that task that is there. So for the HR who is there, it is a bit hard for them to keep on going to look for, because just come and manage them. So it's a bit, and also it's cost effective for the mm -hmm. organization. It's cost effective. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about casual staff, who exactly are we talking about? How different are they from the other, other staff? Just for clarity. So casuals, you find that these are staff that um, uh, they manage, they handle a certain task, yeah? And this task is not like every time it's there. So it's a specialized task? Yes. It's mm -hmm. uh, special, we'd say special, but not like every time it's there. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, let me say, like um, a manufacturing uh, packaging, okay. yeah? So you find that today there's a lot of order uh, this week, a lot, where we need people to help in packaging, carrying, mm -hmm. clearing, forwarding, all that. And then after two weeks, there's nothing, there's no, we don't, there, there are no orders, yeah? Mm. So you don't need to have people who are just seated and doing nothing. Mm. 
All you right. see? So that's why we come in and assist and help them uh, manage these people, um, handle all their issues. Mm -hmm. Yes. So for the payments, they receive them from you. The company pays you, then you yes, pay the yes. staff. Yes, we do everything for these people. They're our people, but they work in your company. Uh -huh. Yes. What about training? Uh, do you, now, if you're getting casual stuff for a particular company, let's say the manufacturing packaging company, and maybe some of this doesn't need training, but in some cases, maybe they need a bit of training. Do you also um, handle that or do you coordinate to the company to train them and then you handle them or how does it go? Uh, we work closely with the company because you find that uh, the HR aspect, when it comes to the performance management aspect, we have to handle it. How they are going to behave and work within the organization, we are the people going to handle. But when it comes to the task itself, yeah, mm -hmm. how it's supposed to be done, then we'll connect the line manager who will take them through how to handle that task. All right. Yes. Particularly because you deal with a lot of companies. Yes. You obviously can't yes. know how to train on every other sure. thing. Sure. So there's this um, particular notion that people have or at least have heard from people who have worked in companies where they have been outsourced by other companies to work for a particular company and I find it very uh, common in uh, the internet providers you know most most companies usually have an outsourcing agency I don't know if I'm getting it correct mm -hmm. if that's very similar to it so for for some people they prefer they usually have the notion that it's better to be hired by the company itself other than getting hired by an outsourced company or sourced agency mm -hmm. because of some terms uh, they're not so as fav favorable and then um, you're easily dispensable you know, that's usually the notions are, that's there. So maybe you'd want to clarify on that. Okay, it depends with the individual understanding. But what I would say, for an employee, an employer, it's, it's workable and uh, it, it's preferable. For an employee, they prefer the, what you're saying, mm -hmm. being, uh, being absorbed by the company itself. Mm -hmm. But you see now, uh, when a company get to this point where they feel like uh, they want to outsource, it means they have a lot and uh, they don't want to concentrate so much. For example, because we also do uh, like uh, subordinate stuff. We outsource subordinates for some company. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you find that they don't want to struggle with this lot of subordinate stuff here and there. Um, uh, they, they're, they're those major things they really want to struggle within the organization. And uh, if they keep their mind into these small, small things where they're going to fire a cleaner, they're going to fire a tea girl, mm -hmm. you know, the whole process, it really wastes their time and wastes their energy where they cannot focus on the actual goal of the organization. So uh, it, it just depends and, um, and the way you look at it. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so it's, it, it depends really yeah, in yeah. the outlook. Yeah. What, are the, what would you say are the potential challenges to uh, casual outsourcing and uh, the risks involved? Um, it, has, um, it has its advantage and uh, also disadvantage. Mm -hmm. As I said, actually they are needed when there's a task. And you'll not tell me this individual person will be waiting there for the next task. Uh, maybe it's going to take three months before another task comes in. So the time you're going to look for them after three months, they've been taken with another company. So you cannot just get them there. Now you are forced to get another, other people, Allah, and then you train them again, mm -hmm. putting in consideration after that task, they might not be there waiting again for the next, the next task. Mm -hmm. And then the aspect is that um, it's casual. Uh, they are always on the look of job, yeah? They want somewhere permanent. True. So you'll find that um, tomorrow you are looking for them, they've already been taken somewhere. So you ought to have a pool of staff. Mm -hmm. uh, casual staff, uh, even the subordinates, you have a pool of them so that you're sure uh, whenever you need them, you can always get them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, when it comes to uh, staff management, because that's also something that you do, what strategies can, um, would you advise companies to employ to ensure productivity? Um, I'll, I'll talk about um, uh, the career, uh, the training, yeah? mm -hmm. more on training aspect because uh, we've had challenges where you bring staff and you put them to work and you expect them to be perform. To perform. In reality, they don't understand what is required of them. Mm. So I would um, ask more on training, uh, particularly the initial training when they come in, just get some time, yeah? 
and let them understand what is required of them. Because uh, sometimes you prefer, you think it's easier just to let them go home, get someone else. Uh, but you see, if you don't take your time and train them, it will affect their your, your performance and productivity. Okay. Yes. Because it definitely will have an effect sure. in the company in the long run. Because you have some companies that usually... You know, they just do fire and hire, mm -hmm. firing mm -hmm. and hiring, mm -hmm. which has some negative negative effect. And so it's costly for the company as well. It's costly uh, sure. at, the, uh, at the end of the day. And especially those that, you know, some prefer hiring um, young graduates because they feel, you know, um, they can be paid small amounts and then you can always find a replacement. What would you tell such a company? Because I know of one, and you know, it's usually <laughs> very much on this trend. You know, they just hire after, after two months, someone has been hired in that position, then they leave, then they get someone else. And you'd find that it's the working conditions that's making people leave. It's some of the things that uh, the company are not looking into that people are leaving. So what would you advise such uh, a company? Uh, I encourage um, the hiring part, yeah? But um, the issue is what happened uh, at that time, yeah? Because also these uh, young ones need to be mentored. They need to be helped to grow. But um, not being misused, after mm -hmm. two months, you throw them out, yeah? Mm -hmm. Remember, it does effect on that, on the company, back to the company. Remember, there's that aspect of continuity within the company. Mm -hmm. I'm a client. Uh, today, I've come. Um, Stefan, you've served me. After two months, it is Jen. After two months, it's Jackie. So you can find, you know, it's like, what's going on in this company? Even yourself, you start asking, yeah? yeah. And it also affects the performance within your organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's good just if you can have those young ones to get them, train them, then absorb them. Uh, it will help the company to grow. Okay. And from a HR perspective, what do you look out for? Because now you do the recruitment process. Mm -hmm. what, what are some of the considerations and things you put uh, in place before you hire someone for, you know, for a particular company? Or even just uh, generally, what are some of the considerations that are usually put in place? Um... First, before we meet you, uh, we'll look at your CV, uh, education, qualification, based on whatever requirement, uh, whatever position that we've been asked to hire, and then your experience, uh, what you've done uh, for that position, can you fit that position. Mm. Then when we meet you for interview, we also look at your attitude and uh, how you are ready to adapt. You know, you might not be having enough uh, experience, mm. but you are willing to learn. You are willing to move on and uh, make change within the organization. So okay. those are the key things we look at. Okay. Mm. So it's the CV and then your attitude now yes. when you come for that particular interview. Yes. Yes. And then not forgetting also uh, courage. Yeah? We would like people are bold. Uh, we mm. don't want people who are nervous. I mean, I mean they are coward. Yeah? People are bold. We are ready to face it yeah mm -hmm. yes all right so when you come to for an interview just make sure you have the confidence in yes place. you ought to the have and you see that one comes one uh you need to understand the content what well, you need to understand that job for example you're looking for an accountant you really need to understand what are the roles clearly you need to dress very well you need to be early um punctual for that interview this mm -hmm. will give you the courage within there during mm. the, the, the session. Okay, and you, you've mentioned um, dressing. What if someone is just um, the job that they're applying for? It's, you know, the packaging and, you know, it's not really an office job. So when you're coming for the interview, do, do you really consider their dressing? Do they have to be official? Um, I've worked with various companies, um, corporate and um, uh, media company like these ones, uh, uh, event company. Uh, as much as you, we don't, uh, you don't really, really emphasize that you should come with a suit. For example, uh, if it's an accountant, you, are, you actually know how you need to dress. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But if I'm looking for an audiovisual person, yeah? uh, these are people, eh? come, uh, even if you can't come in a suit, mm -hmm. come dress in a um, casual, yeah? smart casual, yeah. properly smart casual. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You don't come here dressing in a way that um, it's a bit um, 
you know those kind of dressing huh? yeah. yeah dress it's casual uh, smart casual and presentable for mm -hmm. that interview but we always encourage people just be official even if it's uh, an entertainment uh, field just be official and then uh, we'll, you'll get the dressing mode from once you join the company. You'll get to understand the dressing mode. Okay, so yes. you just come looking presentable, and very then presentable. Yes, you'll get. Yeah, it ma when you come in presentable, it it give, it has its marks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it also makes you feel confident when you are talking to people. Mm. You'll you'll not feel like um, yeah, you're out of place. Yeah. Um, and you know, yesterday yesterday was HR day. If I'm not wrong. I believe, if not yes, I believe it's yesterday. So, um, you know, there's this uh, discussions that have been going around, especially when we when we think of the mental health situation now in the workplace, mm -hmm. and there's some level of toxicity in the workplace. And uh, so, how does an employee, you know, come out to? share their grievances with the HR, because the HR should be the balance, right? Mm -hmm. How do you share your views uh, or your grievances with the HR without affecting now um, your role in that company or how you're perceived by the boss because you'd want actions to be taken? Let's say if you're feeling you're being mistreated and that kind of thing. What Now, what do you, how do you come in um, in that particular in that particular instance, and what would you advise now the employee? Now, um, mostly I encourage HR to have what we call, have a, what we call a, uh, an open door policy, a policy that can allow any staff to come and have a sitting with you, mm -hmm. because we've already been trained on how to handle matters and information of staff. Yeah, so you'll find that most of the HR understand how best they can handle every staff information. However, uh, the kind of nature how we information look like. They have been trained on how to handle it. So we always encourage open door policy. Once the matter has been brought into your office, you will now gauge. We, we have um, uh, gauge how best you can handle it. Yeah? It could be a minor issue, major issue, an issue that uh, it's leading to gross misconduct. Mm -hmm. So based on the nature of the case that have been brought into your, comp uh, into your office, then you look at it and then now escalate based on the nature of the issue. Mm -hmm. All right, so you take into whatever issue, it depends on the particular issue that one sure. is going through. What about um, in instances of uh, resignation, you know, when someone wants to resign from a company, and uh, this is especially, f you know, someone that you have hired on, be on behalf of the company, what you do, staff recruitment. So if they want to resign, now, how do you advise them to go through the process? What is the best way for them to go through the process? If this company is just, is just not um, suitable for me in terms of how, they, how I'm being treated, because maybe the pay already know before, uh, bef beforehand, but how I'm being treated or the working hours or some things are just not um, as I had expected. So how do you, how do you deal with that or, and how do you advise? Okay. Um. How I advise, we you know every staff has a contract. We give them a contract, yeah? And uh, based on their contract and um, in connection with the Employment Act, mm -hmm. you ought to give like a one-month notice if you've been there after more than uh, the probation period, yeah? During the probation period, we can do seven days or 14 days, uh, depending on um, the company uh, regulation. But after the probation period, you ought to give one month, yeah? Uh, notice period. So what we advise them are uh, they proceed, give one month notice uh, to the company so that they can also uh, prepare for us to get another employee. When they do that, they come back to us. Uh, we have a number of openings. So we can always redirect them to a different company where probably they find themselves fitting. Yeah? But we also have to find out probably they could be the problem. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, we need also to find out what is the issue and we take them through some, a number of counseling and also career guidance and mentorship just to help them understand themselves and where they are going and what they ought to do. So before we just get into those resignation, we also need to get to know where they are coming and where they are going. I'm putting in consideration right now the young ones here. Yeah? Uh, the young uh, youth, yeah, they're mm -hmm. getting into employment, and sometimes they get impatient, they're tired, and they're whatever. So you also take them through that process where you tell them, guys, you need to be patient, uh, go slow, 
uh, this uh, nurture your career, let's focus on this. Mm -hmm. So it helps, uh, it, it really, really helps. It really helps. I think that's very, very nice. What about the company? Do you give them feedback? You know, once you work with them for quite a number of time and then you realize, you know, some problem in, in terms of what you get from the staff because they're your staff mm -hmm. and they probably give you feedback. So do you give the feedback back to the company? We do. Uh, we do, uh, but also I uh, will agree with me, it depends with the employees, yeah, mm -hmm. employers. Um, we have various cl uh, clients. Some will take the feedback. Yeah. Some it's their nature. So when I'm, I'm taking a client, maybe a candidate, yeah, mm -hmm. being employing a candidate for this position, we also explain to them the kind of the client they're going to meet. Yeah, All right. yeah uh -huh. then we, I'm giving you this job. This is how we operate. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. So when they are going, they know this is the personality of the client that I'm taking, uh, we, are, we are taking the job uh, from. Yeah. All right. I think, I think that's fair enough. As long as you know what you're getting into, yeah, then sure, sure. it's fair enough. So now how um, do businesses uh, balance the need for flexibility with the importance of uh, at least maintaining a motivated workforce. So, um, this is, you know, you want to be flexible at the same time, and you want to be flexible, so you want uh, your talent to be motivated enough, and especially this is for businesses that are very flexible with work from home, with, you know, reporting and, and other things, but um, still, how do they create a balance with that and uh, being productive and efficient in their everyday, today, you know, work? Because um, I've worked both, yeah? I have worked, worked remotely. I've worked uh, physically in the office. Mm -hmm. I would say it's not an easy thing, yeah? And particularly, like, remotely, something that we are also getting into it, the, f uh, the flexibility aspect. And um, we, we, we grew up knowing that people have to go to the office, yeah? and uh, they have to work there. Yeah. But uh, what I've been en uh, encouraging the clients mostly, uh, when we have this kind of, um, uh, where you have uh, some people can work at home and they can work in the office, mm -hmm. don't assume they're mature enough and they understand. Let them be taken through training on how to manage and handle their task. All right. That would really, really, don't assume they will understand. Because I've been in a position where you're given a task Work at home, this is your task, and you, you're left like that. Mm -hmm. You've not been taken through how this is done and uh, how you can manage your time. And that should not be a one-off training. It should be a training that should be, you keep on reminding people. And besides that, we also have um, performance um, management aspect, yeah? Mm -hmm. I evaluate your, your staff regularly. Let them know you are there and they can be evaluated. Let them get to know here they are and uh, if they are having an issue, please also give feedback. Mm -hmm. Don't keep quiet when a staff is not performing and finally just give them a, a termination letter. Let them understand here you've not performed and if they have performed, let them also get to know they are performing for mm -hmm. them to also to be motivated. All right, so yeah. give feedback, good feedback, mm. um, or um, wh wh how do you call it, feedback that might be not so good but uh, helps you to, to grow mm. at the end of the mm -hmm. day, constructive mm -hmm. feedback yeah. is what I was looking for. Now, moving a, w a bit uh, away from, from this particular topic, you also do career coaching and, and mentorship. So what are some of the areas that you focus on uh, in career coaching and mentorship now that uh, we have an audience of young people who are getting into employment and who'd, wa who'd want to um, to be successful in the recruitment processes and everything. Actually, when you're dealing with career mentorship, uh, we start from um, even choosing their subjects, yeah? Choosing their courses, yeah? Uh, when they're choosing their courses uh, at campus or in colleges, uh, it comes hand in hand. What are the right courses you are choosing? Yeah? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it comes because of pressure and all that. Personally, maybe I would say myself, my first career was a teacher. Oh. And um, I did it because uh, I was told to do it. Uh, not that I liked it. And uh, when I got myself, I realized this is not something I really want. I prefer doing HR. I did what they call career shift. And I realized a number of our young staff are in the same dilemma. Mm. 
mm -hmm. where they find themselves they have chose something maybe because of the pressure because of the parents because of well, that was what that was because that was them mm -hmm. and uh, what do they do how do they do their career shift to whatever they like and this is okay if it can be done when you are young as, as young as you're still young, yeah? yeah? Not when you're very old. Mm -hmm. And then another thing, building up on your career. For example, right now you graduated as a HR. Uh, you're a HR person. And because of there's no jobs for you, what do you run for? You run to be a salesperson, and uh, you run to be a receptionist, you run to be an admin. This, it's still good for you because it's earning you something, but it can only work for you for a certain period of time because it reached a time where you feel like I, I train as a HR and I really need to be a HR but you see your experience is in, ad, in admin your experience in a sales position no one can give you a job of HR so mm -hmm. I tell people as much as you have to run to these other thing careers because of the, your current situation remember you need to build your career at the end of the day I can only give you a job as a HR if you already have the okay. education the qualification and the experience and not based on your education alone because sometimes you are given an office and you're told this is your office as a HR run it if you have not done it earlier it become a, it become difficult for you and you see by that time you are maybe 40 years mm -hmm. and you've been working as an admin and your earlier career was a HR shifting is a problem by that time uh, building it is a problem uh, unless now you've got a good job now you do a career shift like what I did it become easier now to do a career shift and grow in that. Maybe now you decide to move from HR and become a salesperson. Now you grow, mm -hmm. go to school, do your sales, and then now move completely to sales. Which sometimes I find it not happening with the young uh, youngsters. Yeah, they get into it. You find that 40 years. They move from HR, they're now salespeople. They want to go back to HR, but they want to be employed in a HR office, but there's no experience. Uh -huh, it yeah. becomes a problem. Yes. So as much as you can, try and go back to your profession I, I tell them you can always risk when you're still young when you're still staying with your parents when you're still single you can mm. risk when I <laughs> opted I to do my HR I was single and I was um, and I remember where I went to do I did uh, uh, I volunteered for six months and they never gave me even a single shilling but you built experience. so it was easier for me to risk at that point when you're already 30 years and a uh, plus you're already having a family, you have a kid, you're having a husband or a wife. You're having a number of responsibility. You cannot risk. You cannot go volunteer. You cannot go... I mean, you just need a job, mm -hmm. you see. But if you can do... If you're still young, it's easier to do... Uh, you can risk. Because where I did my volunteer, I volunteered for six months. After um, uh, three months, they called me and they gave me a contract for one year. Wow. And uh, from that point... I started building my career as a HR. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to risk when you're still young, but when you're still, you, you, you've grown to become hard. Wow. Yeah. Right. But also focus in grow, grow, I mean, growing your career. Go back to school, uh, attend a number of training, uh, just grow your career to get to wherever you really want okay. to be. Yes. So be out there, and that gives you a competitive advantage sure. over the rest, sure. especially for those that are shifting careers. You mm -hmm. know, you have more certificates so i think that's yeah. also a competitive advantage sure. and um now even as we close on this particular conversation you've also talked about hr consulting so what um what exactly do you um help on well when you talk about hr consulting so uh, when you're talking about hr consulting you find that uh, we have a number of companies some they have hr but they still prefer a hr consultants who can advise more so we come work together with the HR who is there mm -hmm. just to help them grow. But we find that the, some of the companies, they can't afford a HR or they don't prefer having a, a full-time HR time person them. So we come and handle the HR roles where we handle end-to-end -end everything about HR within the organization. So if they have any matters within the organization that need to be addressed, they'll call us and address the issue of their HR. Okay. Mm -hmm. For some people, they just know the HR, HR's role is usually just hiring of staff and firing staff 
what exactly <laughs> what exactly is the JD <laughs> over HR? Just for clarity, what was if you can HR HR kikwita ni you know you're either in trouble in trouble something. Sure, it's part of our role, but that's not the main thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we focus more on uh, organization strategy, just uh, aligning the organization strategy with the vision and mission of the organization. We focus more on training, we focus more on performance management. Motivating these employees within the organization. Mm. Actually, it's more than that. But uh, yes, the recruiting and the firing comes in. Uh, it's firing is more what people don't like, but it's still one of our roles that we do. <laughs> <laughs> it comes to the job, but that's not the main thing. <laughs> yes, but that's not the it's main good, thing. Yeah. It's good to put it out there. But we find that most of the company will uh, recruit a young HR. Uh, who po basically will do much of that, yeah? Mm. So you, you as a HR consultant, you come in basically to advise on the strategic move of the organization, mm -hmm. uh, the performance aspect, yeah, p basically. Okay. Um, let, be, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, how important is it to know about the organizational culture before you get uh, to to apply for a job in a particular organization. How important is it to know about the, the culture in that organization? It is important to know because uh, some of the culture are, I don't know how to say, but you find that you might not, be, you might not like, yeah? It could be a good culture for them, but mm -hmm. it's something that you cannot take it, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, and uh, maybe you are in this organization and uh, you are used on this kind of culture that's there, you end up resigning because probably you look, you're looking for the money uh, and uh, they're paying much better and you get into the other organization, you've not make your research on culture, mm -hmm. their culture, and then you, it becomes very frustrating. Remember, you cannot work in a place that's frustrating for a, a, a long time, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's really, you rather have it's that need to salary and you're having peace, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So if it's a culture that's not really worthy what you like, mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell you just stay where you are, grow yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any final word that you want to, to give us, to give the viewer as we come to a close on this, especially your social media handles and where people can get your services? This sure. is your camera. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, our company's course, Material Career Consultants. We are at Kileleshwa, a Kasuku area. And uh, we also at social media uh, where we, you can find, find us on Facebook. We also have a website where you can find us. Also, you can call us in our number 0716-226-226-427. Also, you can reach us in our number 0721-287-770. I need to repeat it. 0716-226-427. Then another number is 07 Two one two eight seven 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 zero. We are also in Facebook. We are also in Instagram. You can always reach us at any point. We'll assist you on your career growth. We'll assist you in the recruitment aspect. If you are employ, you are employ, employ, you are looking for employers. Please reach us at any time. We'll give you the perfect and the best people. We also help in training, ensuring that the the people you are bringing on board are, are perfect people. And also we ha also help in um, staff management as well, casual management, staff management. Young people, reach us on coaching. We'll coach you on aspect of career so that you don't miss up in your area of your career. All right. For people, I've just remember this, for people that are looking for jobs and they know that companies approach you for, you know, for the casual staff, how, how do they, how do they, is it the same way? Can they just reach you on your social handles or what do, does it take for you to have them in your database at least? Fine. We do have an email, recruitment mm -hmm. at Smart Royal uh, uh, Career, recruitment at Smart Royal Career dot co dot ke where you can send your cv mm -hmm. and reach us there but also you can call us at any point you can reach us on your f uh, in our facebook we'll always interact even linkedin we are in there you can just reach us at that point and we can always interact you at any point mm -hmm. reach us will be able to guide you and help you on that area okay recruitment at smart uh, royal consultants yes. is the email uh, and across uh, the recruitment at uh. smart royal career Material career. Career. Okay. Dot co. Mm -hmm. Dot ke. All right. Recruitment at smart, smart royal career. 
www.ngo.co.ke and that's how they can send their applications not just through the email but also through their LinkedIn accounts and any other social handles as she has mentioned. I hope you have taken something from this particular conversation. We've been talking about management and recruitment, just understanding the process that goes behind the scenes and what is expected of you as an employee and what companies um, usually look out for and what companies expect. This has been Nelly Ayako, the CEO and founder of Smart Royal Consultants, talking to us about this. Thank you very much again, Nelly. Uh, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with Brian Sakwa.